again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And happy September. Yes, here we are, right? You know, I love September. Me too. I, I love the weather. I love it being chilly in the morning. Um, I love not feeling like I'm going to pass out from the heat when I'm doing things outdoors. Yeah, it I is think. a special month. I mean, Dan uh, and I are going camping this weekend because, you, you know, why camp in the summer when you can camp in September, right? Right. Um, yeah, summer got away from us, so... I know. You know how they say things start to go faster and faster the older you yeah. get? I was like, man, what's it going to feel you like know, when I'm 100? Because well, it's going pretty fast now. I often <laughs> think about, like, when you try to, like, think, like, okay, if you live for 30 years, right, 30 more years or whatever, how long, how fast? Because when I think of time, I think, wow, five years goes so fast, eight years goes so fast. But then I think about, so the house that I'm selling over on Parker Street, I bought that in uh, 97. So that was like 25 years ago, 24 years ago. And I think about how long ago it was that I bought that right? house on Parker Street. So I'm like, oh, so that's how long 24 years takes. A long time, so that yeah, made me feel. Time, time is so relative, yeah. but I mean, ultimately, our lives are our time, yes. right? So you know, it's everyone prioritizing should be thinking, your life and making sure that life doesn't get away from you because it yeah. doesn't. There's no do overs. Well, well, exactly. But it's also strange because, like, the more habitual or the more routines you have, hmm. the faster time goes, right? But the more efficient you're being the more your time is scheduled yeah. because that means you're be doing things habitually that are good for you, yeah. routinely, that are good for you. And I was like, oh no, the more efficient I become, the faster my life is going to go by. It's a weird I just try to make, I'm just, It's just important to try to remember to... Um, Stop and smell the yeah, whatever is blooming take right some time now, not and every, the world is gonna, The world will just keep moving around whether you do X or not. Well, it's also sort of like wherever you focus your attention, you know, I shared something this morning on my, my feed that I found very upsetting. It was a video of, um, I think, I mean, they were speaking French, so it's either in Canada or it's in uh, France, France. Uh, but it was a woman who was walking with her friend. The one was masked, the other one wasn't masked, and they were trying to get on a train or a subway. And I mean, like... 12 cops jump the one woman she runs into the station they like dive her there's six guys on top of her i mean it's 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 it's, it's crazy troubling and it's upsetting and the point i bring it up is you know we are creating now right now folks we are creating the future that mm. we want huh. so i think everyone needs to take like a really big breath in life and go is the future we want a future where police are like manhandling possibly abusing someone because she makes a choice about her own right. body that you don't like so i feel very strongly that that is not the future we should be focusing on and that everyone just i don't know man you guys need to take a chill pill and you need to like just regroup and we just need to take a real step back because i remember as you do that you know, a year ago, 18 months ago, when we were like, this is leading towards totalitarianism <laughs> and authoritarianism and tyranny, and we're going to have medical tyranny, and there are going to be vax passports. People were like, You're Carla, crazy. you are insane. I can show you the hate mail. And I'm like, but here we are. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so, so in, the, in the past 24 hours, this isn't a new thing, but it, people starting to like point out the bizarreness of rhetoric. So ivermectin. Ivermectin is... Which a, uh, Pfizer is now going to bring out a pill that you can take twice a day. Pfizer-mectin. Ha-ha! <laughs> Ivermectin has been used around the world for a bit now. Oh, it, yeah, for it's like an 50 anti, years. It's um, an antiviral, anti-parasitical, anti -parasitical, yeah. um, prophylactic, pretty much. Um, the media and the... <laughs> The dumbness. I don't even know what to call people anymore. Like, the people that just repeat without even thinking. Oh, the, my God. Can I give the, you the best example of this? Because I know where you're going, right? So the media said ivermectin is a horse, horse dewormer. dewormer. So stop taking the horse dewormer. And so, I'm so that's like propaganda, right? right? Where you take something. Ivermectin was actually it's discovered by drug. a Nobel Prize winner. 
In 2015, the de- he got a, the Nobel Prize for developing this medicine, mm-hmm. right? Which happens to also be used across uh, veterinary uses, but also for humans as a lot of medicine. Amoxicillin. Actually Think is. of amoxicillin. Everybody has probably taken amoxicillin once in their life. Life. Animals get amoxicillin. That doesn't mean amoxicillin's not suitable for humans. Right. So I accidentally made the following joke on Joe Rogan's Facebook feed. So for people who don't follow along, so Joe Rogan, who's been sort of an outspoken proponent of uh, natural immune system Mm -hmm. is good enough, you know, my body, my choice, you're allowed to decide for yourself based on your risk factors. He's, you know, in his 50s, but he's very healthy. You know, kind of the same sort of vibe that we've been doing, right? Do your research and then decide what's best for you. So he did, he got COVID last week and he did, you know, uh, various alternate medicines, right? So he took some ivermectin, mm-hmm. he got the mono, the uh, mono clonal um, treatment, IV treatment. Uh, there was some other things, zinc, you know, whatever. So there, uh, there was a mix of stuff. But then two days later, he posted on his Facebook with his posit- uh, yeah. his negative test. So he was cured within two days and, and he said he felt really sick for one day, and then two days later, he was fine. Um, so I thought I was making a massive joke, and I said, horse, worm, horse Worm-er dewormers, for the, I FTW, saw that. for the win, right? I liked it. There were, so there were well over 2,000, 3,000 likes at this stage, but there were also almost 1,000 people who decided to personally tag me and attack me for being, I don't know, a moron. And I was like, but... It's a <laughs> joke, guys. People can't, like, if people you can't, can't wrap their head around jokes or anything. Everything is so, so serious. So now. serious. And so I had to go back in and actually re-edit the original post where that just literally said horse dewormer FTW, right? Which apparently has two meanings, which yeah, I didn't know I, about. I used to think it meant something different. Than so I, so it, it means about. expletive the world in some people's That world. was what I thought and it used to mean. And I could never understand why people were reporting putting it at the end of like their my son made the baseball team ftw and i was like oh Whoa. see i never i have never ever before this joe it's rogan for the win is the real yeah and and so i had never heard the other one and and so i had no idea initially when people were attacking <laughs> me i was like don't you get the joke are you a moron you know and then, and then I was like, oh, but I think that's also indicative, right? So you can look at life through the for the win lens. Yep. That's a positive lens. Yep, that's yep. a positive mindset. Yep. That's like putting happiness and sunshine and good stuff out into the world. Or there's the F the world. Yeah, which is and, the de- negative. And that's like a really dark screw you kind of energy. Yep. And so I thought it was so interesting because it was actually like a giant metaphor. Yeah for the misunderstanding that we are seeing in society, right? Like half the people are like fear-based, darkness, evil, you know, control. And then there's us bunch over here kind of going, what is wrong with you people? Just stop it. Pay attention to your own plate. Mind your own business. Worry about your health and I'll worry about mine. How about that? Now let's worry about Tammy's tax bill. So... (laughs) My tax plate. How about that? Um, so in, if you're watching this, in case you didn't see it in the union leader or hear about it on Facebook or whatever, um, it's been time for our five-year property revaluation. Mm. So before we say this, I'm going to tell you, I have been saying for probably the better part of a decade that the way we assess property taxes is so backwards. It's st- Stupid. It makes no sense. It might have made sense at some point. And I realize this is how everybody does it. It no longer makes sense. We literally could come up with a way. We have smart people. We could come up with a simpler, um, more equitable system where if you improve your property, you don't get penalized for it. Um, why would you penalize? So we talk about incentives all the time, right? So why would you create incentives to be like, don't upkeep your property. Right. Don't fix stuff when they break. Don't. I mean, that is literally right. Let your property be decrepit have. because your property, t- it'll keep your assessment, assessment down. down. That makes no sense. So instead, we could, we could 
it would take le legislative changes, but they could change it so that in New Hampshire, and I don't really care what other states do because I don't live in other states, we could base it on acreage and on square footage of buildings. There Simple. would have to be obviously different ca classifications. Okay, figure it out. Come up with a thing, run the numbers, see if it, seem, it seems fair. If it doesn't, tweak those categories, you know, tweak it. We can make it work. That would do away with these five-year assessments, which cost money. They cost a lot of money for a municipality to do these they assessments. They cost even more money when private citizens have to hire PIs to follow the assessors yeah. around to make sure they're doing their job, so, which they're often not. Um, Vision Government Solutions, who's been doing Manchester's assessments for... I'm going to say two decades, a long, quite a while now. As long as Tammy's had that house. Well, I think so. I mean, I think it's, it's in the, it's while I owned it, because I remember thinking, what? And I went to a, um, an info meeting way back when they first started using this organization who, and they were really forthright. They explained how presumptions are made on property tax assessment because you don't have to let people the assessor's office or vision appraisal or anybody into your property anymore there the state law was changed you can they used to say you only could you could only appeal your tax bill if you let them in now that's not the case you can still appeal your tax bill whether you let them in or not but the t they did explain that they make your home is still your castle they um it they still make presumptions. If you have basement windows with mini blinds on it, they kind of presume that you have a finished basement. And I was like, oh, I had never really thought about it. You know, there's different things, these presumptions. So fine. Um, every year, we they, they do the city budget, and inevitably the Democrats want to override the tax cap. This is not a secret. This has been going on in a, as long as the tax cap has been in place. Um, years ago, before the tax cap, there were years that we had double digit tax increases, you know, 13, 16%. Um, once the tax cap was put in place, at least we've curtailed it down to a more manageable, it still increases every year, but it's at least, you know, stays within or closer to the rate of inflation. Right. Which again, just for the folks following our Back home, what is inflation? Inflation is an invisible tax on you. Every time you hear free stuff, you have to go, yep. who's paying for it? Because it's not really free. Are we paying for it as taxpayers? Or is it coming from this massive pool of money that the Federal Reserve, a private company, uh, prints on behalf of the government, and then the more money there is, the less it's worth. So inflation is a invisible tax on you. So they raise your taxes every year already because they increase spending. They make promises that they don't have any way to fund. You know, when we give um, when we give out pay raises three years out, how do you know you're going to have money in two years to even do that? Um, Services in Manchester, I don't think anybody would say has increased. If anything, they've decreased. So, I mean, we're very grateful for the two days you opened the dump right. a month, you know, <laughs> um, on a weekend. Wow. So, thank you. There's also the way we, re we assess prop residential property versus the way we um, assess commercial property. So you would think that if it's based on value, it would all be based on the same kind of thing, but it totally isn't. Residential property is based on the real estate value, which is kind of crazy because unless you're selling the house, it doesn't matter what the real estate market might get you. You're living in it. The li your elderly neighbor that paid, you know, $35,000 for their home now has to pay taxes on a property assessed at 350,000. It's crazy. Then their commercial side is based on square footage and profitable of the property. Which so, is also some kind which of magic is backwards. term, right? So if you have a big vacant property like Shaw's on South Willow Street that obviously is not generating income because it's vacant, they're gonna their property taxes will go down. So just keep that in mind. So now the new revaluation, just so you're buckle up and hold on, um, single family homes will go up 46% in reval. Residential condos, what? 52%. Two family homes. This is really what cr these next three kill me. Two family homes, 64%. Three family homes, 61%. Four to eight family homes, which we all probably will say tend to be the lower income 
rental, the lower rental price places. Their values are increasing 76%. Which kind of doesn't make sense. No, right? and commercial is only increasing 14%. Well, so that means we're going to take millions and millions in tax burden and shift it from the commercial properties in Manchester to the single family home owners and landlords. Well, to the single family own homes and landlords, but in that last category, you know, when we talk about this on the show There's, too, call this basic economics for anyone who had to go through public school training. Um, the the uh that what was it 76 76 percent so um so people will go oh well you know i don't understand why my rent's going up why is my rent going up these evil 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 right? landlords and it's like well maybe someone should ask why did the city put the landlords right property taxes up 76 percent because you know what landlords pass that through to you. So if you're paying rent and you wonder why you were paying $1,000 two years ago, and now they're asking 1,800, yep. I saw some ludicrous meme the other day where it was literally something like that where it went up. It is because there is no such thing as free stuff. Yep. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, forty six percent on on the homes too is That's kind of crazy. bananas, so I, I, right? I, I so did, how I, much does that increase so stuff? Because I haven't gotten my, my bill yet, so I'm I haven't gotten my bill, but I, I did was doing the math before, and then today I went to go look up um, Dan's actual taxes, and I realized that the new numbers are so. Prior to this, Dan's house is assessed at two hundred and four thousand four hundred dollars. Now I will tell you this. We did not pay $204,400 for it. We didn't pay anywhere as close to $204,400. As you're not attorney, I advise you do not disclose further. Nope. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, we, we currently pay $5,040.50 to have the streets plowed, educate kids in a failing school system, have my trash picked up once a week, um, police and fire, and, the, and, the, and then uh, the common area. So I have to include the parks where the homeless where live. Where soon we will not be able to walk unless we can prove that we got injected with yeah. something we don't want. So the future you want. My new assessment will be $297,800, which it's hard to say what that means about taxes because when the, when the pool of assessment increases, the tax rate goes down because it's still... Here's the number, you know, whatever it is, 500 billion million trillion dollars. That's what we need, whatever the number is, right? So you take the total assessment and you calculate it against that, and that's where the, the tax rate comes from. So currently we pay, I think, 2633 or 2644 per thousand dollars in assessed value. So you take your assessment of 204, 400, divide it by a thousand, and multiply it by the 2644, and that's how they come up with the $5,040. Under the new assessment, nobody really knows what the rate exactly is going to be. I originally people were saying eighteen dollars, then I heard eighteen fifty. Yesterday I read seventeen fifty. So even using seventeen dollars and fifty cents per thousand, which is a super super conservative number, my taxes will go up with no increase in spending, one hundred and seventy one dollars. Per if it's, what? Well, no, per year. Oh, okay. But for nothing new. Okay. Just because. Because the real estate market is booming. That means your house is probably going up $171 or so. Now, if it's $18 instead of $17.50, we're probably closer to like $320. If it's $18.50, it's going to be more like four or $500. But the reality is, is I am not getting a single thing more for this extra money. At the same time that the Mall of New Hampshire will be paying far, 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 far less than they currently are because, well, COVID. And, I'm, and back to the renters, imagine if, if you have a, if you had a, your landlord's property is assessed at $300,000, so say it's a three, a three tenement, their value is gonna increase $228,000. So even when you do the math and you say, well, we'll do that $17.50, 
their property taxes are going to, ha they have to, it's almost doubling their value. Yep. That means the, their cost in property taxes almost doubled. All the people out there clamoring for, we need more affordable housing, and oh my God, we need more affordable housing, and we need more affordable housing. This is not making anything more affordable. affordable. This is doing just the opposite. And well, it's also, insane. With, with the more affordable housing, part of the problem there, of course, is also zoning. So because we've we've created this sort of paradigm yeah. where you don't really truly own your property anymore. I know I said earlier, your home is your castle. That would be a nice thing uh, if it were entirely true. Of course, that's how it's supposed to work. But really, in some ways, you're just I don't know, renting your property from the government because if you don't pay your taxes, they will take it. Um, and so, yeah, oh. I'm just doing math, keep talking. She's just doing math, but when you're doing math, it oh, distracts me. So your home is your castle uh, is not entirely true, right? Because if you don't pay these taxes, someone eventually will take your property. And didn't we see that with that hermit? Yes. Who, uh, well, well, he was squatting, right? Right. Oh, don't even get me talking about squatting. Okay. Yes. yes. So, segueing. <laughs> well, like, to... <laughs> just to, um, that property, that landlord that has a $300,000 house, three, three units, units, currently they're paying, um, $7,932 in taxes, which for each unit, if you do that math, is what? $2,600 a year. So when you wonder where, you know, why your when landlord keeps raising everything. Like $200 a month. Their, that's their the property reason. taxes, using that conservative $17.50 raise, will go up nine to $9,040. That's another $1,300 a year, which is another hundred and some odd dollars a month, which means that your rent's guaranteed to go up $35 for nothing. Right. Absolutely and, nothing. And so the point I wanted to make with the zoning is the zoning causes shortages, right? So first of all, you're not actually letting the, the market adapt or adjust nimbly. So let's say by way of example, uh, we realize there's a housing shortage in Manchester. I'm like, you know, I could convert my garage into an apartment. I could, you know, rent that out. Yep. Uh, granny flat, whatever, right? Now you can't actually just like do that anymore, right? You can't like, just you pay go... the thousands of dollars to contractors. Contractor. You have to go you get permission. You have to go get permits. This takes ages. You know all of that stuff. So eventually, people just go, meh. No. Okay, it's not worth it to me. It's too much of an effort to go do this stuff. It's too many hoops to jump through. And then lo and behold, we have affordable housing shortages. Again, the blame lies not with the greedy landlords, nope. not with the poor tenants. It lies with the government who just manages every time they stick their finger in a pie to make stuff worse. Yep. America was a better place in terms of economics and, and, and having a robust middle class. This whole notion of the super rich and the super poor is becoming a reality, but no one's looking at the root causes. You know, 2008 with that financial crisis, that was a big deal. Everyone's like, where do the homeless people come right. from? I'm like, Hundreds well, and of thousands, maybe not hundreds, tens of thousands of people were put out of their homes. Now we've got first and last month, it becomes super risky to rent to people. Yep. You know your oh. rent might go up, so now you're like, well, I got to get tenants who can actually pay. Yep. I'd like to take a risk on this person, but I'm not going to because... It's because not worth I've, it to because, me. Because, I might not be able to evict yeah. them. Maybe these are like dirt bags and they're just going to stay here and stop paying rent. Um, you know, everyone seems to think anyone who invests in a property, i.e. someone who saved their money and may have lived very frugally to invest in this thing, they're like, oh, you're the greedy landlord. I'm like, no, if that person doesn't pay their rent, I can't pay my mortgage. And that's a yeah. problem. So all of these things are interconnected and we need to go not to each other and our neighbors and rich versus poor. We have to look at the source of the problem and the source of the problem is the government. You know, it's not just the reval that causes this. This is just the result of many, many, many years of spending more than the people can afford. So 
you know, just in recent, just in the last couple of months, we went from charging high school students to ride the city buses, which by the way, does anybody ever see any people in the city buses? It's, I saw three of them last week when I left here. Between the three of them, there was one rider. But we used to charge high school students to use the city buses to get to school. Now we've decided that that's free. We have added two meals a day to all students, regardless of their uh, ability to feed themselves. You know, they could be from the most affluent family in the, in the city, which I highly doubt the most affluent family is sending their kids still to the public schools. But if they were, we're gonna feed those kids for free. So we do this, we promise raises we can't afford. We, we take on projects that are bigger than we can afford. We, we're gonna bond, which we have to, because we, there's needs and wants. We're gonna have to bond, I think it's 50, 55, 55 million dollars yeah. to work on the sewer upgrade that's required by state law because we can no longer continue to let our sewer seep into the river. Uh, there are things we have to do. We should be paving roads. We should do things. But then on the other side of it, we, we do things that I'm like, we really can't afford that. But when you do that for year after year after year after year after year, eventually it all catches up. And in this case, it's catching up with us in our property assessments. And every single property, residential property, or you know anybody who has a, a rental unit for residential, is going to just be like, what? why is this going up? Did you see the, I, I didn't personally see the quote, but I did see a tweet saying that Kathy Sullivan said that. Said we should just solve, if we oh. want cheap land, go to Coas County. That's not, um, what, what, how is that productive? Well, well, so this is the second productive. time just, um, so, so I don't have the quote in front of me, but let's say the sentiment that I have heard from the Democrats is, well, if you're elderly and you're on fixed income and you can't swing this massive tax hike that we're just going to put sell on your you, house and move. you need to, you, you need to away. leave. And I find that highly offensive mm -hmm. you know we aren't just um so, we aren't just uh numbers and like tax yep. base <laughs> these are human beings these are people who have lived in a home for their whole yep. lives that kind of stuff and it's just mindless and evil frankly to to be like oh you know what you're you're not good enough for us anymore so get the hell out of our city and and i find that offensive so it, if that's the way you're thinking i think you need to regroup and really think about that and maybe think about the ways that we can support the elderly the people on fixed incomes and it's not by punishing them nope and i one thing that the people that are going another group that are going to really feel the pinch is um, veterans and elderly that get a tax credit, like you can get five hundred dollars for yeah. being a veteran, right? But that comes off the bottom line. So they're, you know, where it's not like it's not like they're going to see like if you see a three hundred dollar increase, that's going to that yeah, it's you crazy. just it's, it's, it's crazy. It's no bueno, so, people. No to, bueno. Welcome to spend, 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 spend. So managed we by Democrat city of Manchester. You need to all get out there and support some good people. So thank you to everyone who came to our first West Manchester Day. It was a huge rounding success. There were uh, tens of scores of maybe a hundred people at its yep. peak. Lots of little kids. Yeah, we it was did, great. It was um, lots of fun. You know, hacky sack throwing and some uh, uh, tug of war. Tug of war and the whole thing so it's going to be an annual thing i yep. hope people will come out again next year and let's uh let's build our communities yep. let's build our neighborhoods back okay we're out of time again ta-da ta-da by no check, check out, out carla's book, book. <laughs> the ecstatic pessimist you can find an interview on c-span book tv with my name carla garrick or on carla garrick.com that's all we got time for we'll see you next week have a great weekend thanks guys bye bye